Well, here we've come now to one of the most important high places, La Salian high places, particularly in the last 40 to 50 years. A high place? Yes, a place where God has been worshipped, perhaps in various ways, perhaps a Druids in the pre-Christian era, certainly a Christian church, certainly a place of retreat, at times managed by the Carthusians from the nearby monastery, certainly the place where Blessed Beatrice worked and is buried, and Sister Louise, someone who was to have an enormous effect on the life of John Baptist de La Salle. Parmeni, as the name suggests from the Latin, is a place with walls and fortifications. And in that sense, the church that you see behind you has been built many times over the centuries. Most recently destroyed when it was a hideout for some of the resistance during the Second World War and was bombed by the Germans, but again and again restored. For us, it's the great story of John Baptist de La Salle, coming this time from Grenoble to fill in for his friend Yves de Salion, who was the chaplain here on this hillside and said Mass, and who either because he had to or perhaps he made a pretext of having business somewhere else for two or three weeks. And he asked de La Salle to come here and replace him. This is just after de La Salle had had this dreadful treatment being put over a gridiron, etc., to cure him of rheumatism. What we do know is that he came. We know also that when he came, or possibly while he was here, that a letter arrived from the principal brothers in Paris. And this letter called him back to take possession of the society. The difference in this letter was that they called in in the name of the same vows as they'd all pronounced together on the 6th of June, 1694. De La Salle was reluctant to go, but he consulted with Sir Louise, this illiterate shepherdess. To me, it's one of the great symbols of De La Salle, his humility, his belief that God speaks in many different ways and in the strangest ways, so that the doc doctor of theology is prepared to listen to the illiterate shepherdess, and the doctor of theology is prepared to follow the advice of the shepherdess and return to take up what he's going to call God's work. Parmeni, therefore, is a high place for us, and since it was rediscovered, we could almost say, by Brother Leo Burkhardt, of whom we'll speak on another occasion, it's become a place, first of all, of pilgrimage for brothers, and increasingly for pilgrimage of young people who come here for retreats and sessions of all kinds. It's a place where communities of brothers from different parts of the Lasallian world have come to visit or to make retreats as well. For us, it's a high place because here people discerned and followed God's will. Here people took another step in a journey of many steps, the kind of thing about following a vocation that requires us always to be willing to take the next step to start anew. Parmeni for us is one of our very important high places. We're now at the eastern end of Parmeni and looking down the valley of the Isere. In this beautiful panorama, you can't quite see the house that once belonged to Yves de Salion, de La Salle's great friend, remember, who invited the brothers first to Grenoble and who had de La Salle replace him here at Parmeni. In this very beautiful spot now, the brothers, since their arrival here and taking over as a retreat center in the 1970s, have developed all kinds of ways whereby young people can come, other people can come as well, and share this beautiful view. They've built paths, they've planted trees, they've made this a place of nature where it's instinctive almost to worship God from the very beauty of what you behold.